Assalamu alaikum dear students, I am engineer Abdul Basit and we are in week 15, lecture 29 and the topic we are going to cover today is seepage calculation from a flow net. Okay, so in previous few weeks we have discussed the seepage phenomena, the permeability phenomena and also we have discussed how to draw a flow net uh, for, a, uh, for a soil sample or for an undisturbed soil sample which is placed or uh, existed on the uh, on an impermeous soil okay so uh, how to draw that flow net and what type of lines are included in a flow net so uh, there are two types of lines that is flow lines and eco potential lines and already we have discussed the phenomena of potential drop and flow uh, the, the, that uh, flow channel as well okay so here in this tutorial we are going to calculate the seepage from this flow net okay so how to do this why uh, how this phenomena works for the calculation of seepage so here it is let's say we have a simple situation like in this diagram I'm, I'm moving forward a bit here it is this is a sheet pile installed in a, a pervious soil uh, which is placed on an impervious soil this is an undisturbed situation in on the ground okay so here on the upstream side the water level is up to this which is like 5.6 meter uh, this is an assumed value here on the downstream side the 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 water level is 2.2 so definitely there is a loss of water ahead uh, f from downstream side to the uh, f from upstream side to the downstream side so let's say uh, we have installed a sheet pile in this impervious soil at this position right at the mid and on the upstream side the water is present at this level so this water will try to move from this down so from this uh, upstream side to the downstream side so as there is a resistance present the sheet pile is installed over here so then uh, the, the the water that wants to move from upstream side to the downstream side will go through this this direction okay and that will be the seepage through this soil okay so these are those lines this this flow lines these are uh, uh, already discussed this is flow line and this is again a flow line and here this line is eco potential line so all this thing is the uh, the the flow net okay now let me talk about the flow channel as i've discussed that the surface of the sheet pile will also be considered as an uh, a flow line okay so this is a flow line this is a flow line so between these two flow lines the space present is called a uh, flow channel okay so let us take a flow channel from this here let's say this this second flow channel is being taken for that experiment for that calculation so in the magnified form of uh, uh, mm, a big a bit magnified form of this uh, flow channel is present over here okay so let me move back to that slide here it is okay you can see this is a single flow channel this is that one flow line this is that other flow line so this is uh, the that magnified form of that uh, that part of the flow channel I've taken and I've discussed in the previous slide okay here you can see this is that one eco potential line this is that second eco potential line this is the third one this is that fourth one okay between these two flow lines this line and this line this is called flow channel okay and now the rectangle or the, the square form between these uh, eco potential lines and the flow lines okay this thing this is actually that flow element okay so uh, let us consider that this flow element is completely square okay another thing we can uh, assume from this diagram is at this level at this eco potential line we have the potential head that is equal to h1 and for on the next eco potential line the potential head is being dropped to the to s some value that is less than h1 okay so the difference between this h1 and h2 is called potential drop already we have discussed in previous tutorials and again the difference between h2 and h3 is again the second potential drop and this is the third potential drop okay and the, the assumption i've already discussed is this this is a square element so the length and the width will be equal let us take uh, discharge phenomena through this flow channel okay so discharge is actually the amount of water uh, passing through a unit area in unit time okay so the unit area must be perpendicular to this uh, flow direction 
so here this arrow is actually showing the direction of the flow and this is the area that is perpendicular to the flow direction okay and uh, here the one axis or one side of this square area is shown over here and the other side or the uh, of the area is actually out of the plane that is in the uh, z direction okay out of this uh, uh, laptop screen or this whiteboard okay so that is not shown over here and that is being considered as unit okay one meter width is being considered over here okay so here it is the proper discussion about this thing you can say that discharge according to the Darcy formula is equal to K I A okay so K is that hydraulic gradient uh, this is that uh, uh, hydraulic conductivity and I is the hydraulic gradient and A is the area perpendicular to the direction of the flow okay so uh, I is actually the hydraulic gradient and hydraulic gradient is actually equal to that uh, head difference divided by the length okay so this is that head difference between these two points let's say I am taking this first uh, potential drop in consideration so here it is K H1 minus H2 divided by L1 L1 is the distance you can see it from here okay so this height will also be equal to h1 because this element is completely a square one okay we have considered it a square element actually this may not be a square uh, this this may be a rectangular or maybe a trapezoidal in uh, uh, in shape okay and here it is this length this is that uh, area okay so this should be l1 multiplied by something like b like h like something because this is area not length okay why this is only l1 here the width is taken as unit which is one okay so l1 multiplied by one so that give us the l1 okay so uh, for the next potential drop this will be k h2 minus h3 divided by so this is that head loss at the uh, second potential drop and this is that length at the second potential drop here it is okay and this is that width so perpendicular width should be like this height multiplied by the width which is taken as one and similarly so on okay so uh, for completely a square element or you can say a net of the square element throughout the flow channel uh, will give us a situation that the potential drop will remain the same between two potential lines uh, that equipotential lines okay so uh, then the the form of the equation will become like this h1 minus h2 this is their potential drop so if it has a square element all over this is square element this is square element and all the square elements are like of the same size so then uh, h1 minus h2 will be equal to h2 minus h3 okay so this potential drop will be equal to this potential drop and will be equal to this potential drop okay so this is the situation and ultimately this head loss is actually equal to h divided by nd how it is this h is actually the the head difference on the upstream side and the different uh, the downstream side so this is h1 minus h2 this is that the head at the upstream side this is that head at the downstream side as I've shown you in this slide here it is this 5.6 is actually h1 and this 2.2 .2 is h2 okay so h1 minus h2 this is h okay so this is their total head uh, you can say that loss in the head are the difference in the head between the first potential of potential line equipotential line to the last equipotential line okay so that can be divided on the uh, uh, on that uh, ND as well okay that can be divided on ND as well and that is uh, how ND ND actually the uh, is actually the number of the potential drops okay so this is their total head so per potential drop the potential the, the the head loss will be equal to H divided by the number of the potential drops okay so this will be that phenomena now Delta Q will become equal to K and this is that head loss which is equal to H divided by ND okay so H1 minus H2 so instead of this H1 minus H2 the head difference we have uh, put it this value that is H divided by ND and this L 
L1, L1 will get cancelled to each other and this one will also be cancelled with this H1 and this H3 will be cancelled with this H3. So all the values will become like delta Q is equal to K H divided by NT. Okay. <coughs> Now moving ahead, here it is the, the new equation we have obtained from that situation, okay? Now uh, in the number of the channels that is NF, okay? For example, we have, we have taken this situation for a single flow channel, okay? So there will be multiple flow channels in a flow net, okay? So this situation should be uh, expanded to that phenomena of the of a new flow channel so here it is if we have multiple flow channels like uh, two three four five and so on so for that the number of flow channels that term should be added over here that is nf and that this phenomena is already being discussed in the previous tutorials okay so nf divided by nd so this nf is number of the flow channels and nd is the number of the potential drop and this h is actually the difference of the uh, head on the upstream and downstream side so i've repeated it uh, this is this is their simple situation now in case uh, we have uh, initial the initially the assumption was that the flow elements are square okay but it may be uh, in rectangular shape okay uh, it may have a rectangular geometric shape uh, a trapezoidal shape so let us consider a rectangular situation where the the this the, this is the uh, the new form where the length is l1 and the height or the width is b1 okay and this is expanded or the uh, the, the 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 width of the uh, surface of the soil is taken as unit okay and then it will be multiplied for if the values changes so here it is the rectangular portion okay and this is having l uh, the length l1 and the width b1 so this is rectangular now not both the sides are equal so that that that, that was a situation in the square and in the rectangular situation we have this l is the separated value and b1 is a different value th from that of l1 so this will be the situation now moving on here you can see that the equation for the discharge will be equal to k h1 minus h2 divided by l this is that hydraulic gradient but instead of that l1 now we have b1 okay so this is that area perpendicular to the b1 multiplied by 1 okay that is out of the plane so b1 multiplied by 1 is the area that is perpendicular to the direction of the flow so here it is b1 multiplied by 1 so that will become equal to b1 so uh, here it is b2 multiplied by 1 b3 multiplied by 1 okay so now this will be the situation so you can say that b1 divided by l1 may have a different value that is considered as uh, n okay and this is actually equal to the the uh, the ratio of the width or the the height to the length of uh, the rectangular that that is that is being form form in the flow net. So here it is b1 divided by l1, b2 divided by l3, and that is equal to n and can be put it over here. So this equation that we have derived so far here it is that can be modified to this form that is k h n divided by n d and this n is actually equal to b1 divided by l1 b2 divided by l2 and so on okay so if we have uh, uh, this d derived this equation for multiple channels then it will be equal to uh, this n f should be used over here this is the number of the flow channels okay again we have used the same phenomena as we have discussed here in this equation okay this is for the single flow channel this is for multiple flow channels now here it is again the same thing okay so this is the equation for the uh, seepage calculation from a flow net where the flow elements are rectangular okay now seepage calculation from a flow net uh, this is that situation simply we have discussed okay let's say uh, we have a situation where uh, the this first flow channel is giving us all the elements rectangular uh, sorry square okay and this second channel is also giving us all the elements square but this last one or this third channel is not giving us all the elements that are 
square that may be rectangular or maybe of other shape okay so if this is a situation then then we will have to uh, discuss this equation for three different situations okay I like two same situation and one different situation so this equation cannot be simply multiplied with n okay this should ha have a proper value with that and that that should uh, explain the situation right given over here okay so you can see in this first channel the L divided by B R B divided by L ratio will be equal to 1 in the second flow channel the L divided by B R B divided by L value is equal to 1 and here L divided by B is 1 divided by 0 0.38 in the third channel so this is the third channel okay so I've told you this is not a square one all these first and two second channel is the square and this is the rectangular one now the situation for the first and second channel discharge will be equal to K and D uh, and multiplied by H and multiplied by n small n so small n is equal to 1 over here similarly small n is equal to 1 over here so 1 plus 1 this will be good 2 k h divided by n d so this is the situation for the first two channels now for the third channel the situation will be a bit different and that is uh, instead of that small n you have to put 0 0.38 okay that b divided by l ratio is now equal to 0 0.38 so here it is now this will be equal to delta q3 which is equal to 0 0.38 k h divided by nd okay so the the discharge the total discharge through all these three channels will be equal to the sum of these dis three discharges and that is delta h uh, q1 delta q2 and delta q3 okay so uh, this is uh, the, the sum of these first two discharges is equal to 2 k h divided by n d and this is 0 0.38 so this will be equal to 2.38 k h divided by n d okay so this is the situation for when we have the flow channels not of the same shape they are different in shape one or one flow channel is giving us rectangular uh, flow elements and the other one is also giving us rectangular flow elements but the third one is giving us uh, some different thing that is square element so uh, if there is uh, a difference between the elements of the flow channels then we have to derive this equation particularly and this is for uh, how to do it okay so in the next class inshallah we will discuss about uh, how to uh, solve few numericals on the uh, on the flow channels how to draw a flow channel and flow net okay and uh, what is the uplift pressure under the hydraulic structures so if the water is like passing through this hydraulic structure and seepage phenomena is occurring through it so uh, how this water is acting pressure on this uh, on this hydraulic structure and uh, what type of uplift and how much uplift pressure is acting on it and how to calculate it on different points okay so thank you very much for watching. Assalamualaikum.